Welcome, everybody. It's good to see you. Uh, we, we learn because we have a desire to learn. Our hearts reach out to know. And in this class, we are seeking to know truth and its vitality, uh, truth and its instruments that we can use it in our daily lives. Uh, there is a truth that you could call it historical, uh, not personally related to your victory, uh, to your uh, essential uh, living, but this truth that we're talking about has to do with the way you live and what God can do in your personal life. Uh, today's lesson, and we're giving this group of studies on the promises of God, promises that God have made, commitments that God has made. And we are studying at this moment the greatest promise in the Bible. Now, I am, I am very aware that it's most difficult for any person to pick out one promise of the thousands of promises and say, now, this one happens to be the greatest. However, I believe that if we, if we do, that you and I both will be satisfied that this is true, that it is the greatest promise in the Bible. Now, uh, uh, you'll find the greatest promise in the Bible to be... Uh, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 21, and verse uh, 7, in verse 7. May I read it to you at this time? Uh, the Word of God says, God speaking to us, He that overcometh, and I love that word, overcometh, uh, because an overcomer is a person that goes over. <laughs> he doesn't go under. An overcomer means he comes over the problem. He comes over the sorrow. Some people can't get over their sorrows. Some can't get over their difficulties. There are many things that they can't get over. But the overcomer is the one who goes over. And we want you to be an overcomer. We want you to overcome problems, temptations, sin, in any form. And so the greatest promise, the number one promise of the whole Bible, as you have your Bibles open now to the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, uh, chapter 21, next to the last chapter, and verse 7, the overcomer shall inherit all things. Now, if I were you, I would put a little circle around the word all, <laughs> because all happens to be all. An overcomer, read this great book from Genesis to Revelation, and get to this finale of the great Bible, and then it says, the overcomer 7,000 promises in the Bible. The overcomer shall inherit. Now, the word inherit means to possess. If I inherit a farm, the farm is mine. I go live on the farm. I till the soil. I make the profit. It's mine. I inherited that farm. And so the Bible says the overcomer shall inherit. That doesn't mean he just gets to look at it. When I went through the Vatican in Rome, I went through the treasury of, uh, of, of St. Peter's, and it took several hours. We saw diadems full of diamonds. We saw swords uh, full of diamonds. Uh, we saw the, the, the things that had been given to the church for the last 1,500 years, and, and the, the treasures. All the nations of the world have made contributions of some kind to the church, and here they are in this great uh, museum, I suppose you would call it. And we went by and looked. <laughs> but there were guards standing close by all the time. And everything of any value there was, was behind glass. And inside that glass, uh, they have, had a system that if you touched the glass or broke the glass, then it set an alarm off and every door was closed and you were inside with the guards. <laughs> and the treasure was quite, quite safe. Uh, I, but I only got to look at that treasure. I couldn't in, at any moment say, this is mine. Now, the, the word here is different from that treasure. It says, the overcomer shall inherit. Now, when you inherit a thing, you don't work for it. In fact, when you inherit a, a thing, it may, you may not even be worthy of it, you know. Inheritance don't come because of worthiness. It becomes because of relationship. The person who possesses it decides that you uh, should receive it, whether you're a no good or some good or mighty good. Uh, you, you, are, you are to receive the inheritance. And so the inheritance here belongs to the person who lives the victorious Christian life, and we call him an overcomer. You see, you could call Noah an overcomer. 
you, you could call Moses an overcomer, you see. Uh, and, and the overcomer shall inherit. That means it shall be given to him. He doesn't have to uh, quarrel over it. He doesn't have to work for it. He doesn't have to seek after it. He is receiving it as an inheritance, as a relationship with the Father, that he shall inherit, and then uh, you, you, you're bold over. He shall inherit all things. Now, that's heaven and earth. That's all the constellations in the skies. I, I know this is bigger than you're able to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to understand, really. How can we understand that we've inherited? But that often comes true. A person comes into inheritance, he doesn't know how big it is. He has to go and see his inheritance. Uh, maybe he doesn't live in the same country, and he's got to go and say, hey, I have an inheritance. I want to come see it. <laughs> ah, but we're going to inherit all things. And that's heaven and earth. We're going to inherit. Now, the Bible says this, and I accept it. And, and now you're beginning to see that it, is, it positively is the, 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 the greatest promise of all the 7,000 promises. This is the biggest one. And it's the biggest one because it's everything. It's addressed to the believer. All the promises of God are addressed to believers. And the, the believer shall inherit. They shall come to possess. They shall come to own all things. All things. And then he goes further after he says, he's given you all things. He says, and then I will be his God. I will be his God. Jehovah said, I will be your God. And you shall be my son. What a relationship with God. Just as Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God, that we, as the overcomers, inherit all things and we become his sons also, that we are the, the sons of God. Isn't that an amazing an amazing promise. It's one that you should think over, you should pray over, you should think about, and you should say, my, my, isn't it wonderful? Living for God, what an opportunity. Uh, becoming one of the sons of God, what a glorious thing to know that we are right now one of the sons of God and that we are in line for the inheritance. In one promise, we possess all the promises of God. <laughs> yeah, in one promise, we, in, we include the other, we include the other uh, uh, 6,999. They, they're all coming in there because all things provides and includes everything that God has ever promised before that time. We've now come to the ultimate, you see, and that in this promise we have all the other promises continued. And this one seals the entire. Therefore, in one promise we possess all the promises of God. We should very carefully uh, study and to see and to understand who is the one that will receive such a promise, the greatest of all promised. This, this great promise, I, I, I personally want to say that it belongs to the persistent. We have so many quitters in our world today. We have so many stoppers. They begin, but they don't continue. The lust of the flesh take them that way. The greed for money takes them down that way. And, and they, they want to do things that are not spiritual or not right, and they go off down different ways. But the, the greatest promise belongs to the persistent that will follow and follow and follow. And we might say to the loyal, to the loyal disciple of the Lord Jesus, the, the, the loyal one that says, I, I have no other loyalty but you. We have so too many loyalties in this world. And you must say, I have no other loyalty but you. You're the one in which I am loyal to. I refuse to be loyal to anyone excepting my Father, which is in heaven. And so, this greatest promise, <laughs> it comes to those who were, were sinners and become saints. Uh, they were not sons, and they became sons. Isn't that great? And, and so that's who this greatest, fullest uh, promise of the whole of the Bible uh, comes to be ours uh, because we become born-again believers, not church members, born-again believers. When we become born-again believers, then the whole thing belongs to us. I think it is about the most exciting thing that a person could ever say and that a person could ever believe in, in that uh, we receive the greatest of all promises by becoming one of the children of the Most High God, that our sins are washed away and we know it, we're sure of it, and it belongs to us because we are one of His saints. What a glorious promise it happens to be. You would ask me, he says, now, could you tell me how uh, to receive, to be sure that I'm going to receive this greatest promise? I, I believe it's uh, in the Word of God. We don't have to take a man's opinion. In 1 John 5 and 4, these words are stated by God. He says, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now, you, you have to pause there for a moment. Uh, who, 
will receive and inherit all things. It tells you here, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. When you are born of God, as I was saying a few moments ago, and you know that you're born again. You, How am I born again? And the Word of God says in 1 John 1 and 9, when we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, now remember that, that's 1 John 1 and 9. That's the way you get into the kingdom. That's the way you become part of this business of getting the inheritance, is to be born into the kingdom of God. So uh, when we are born into that kingdom, we're His. It says, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. No doubt about it, the world has no enhancement for you. The world has no enchantment for you when you are truly born again. And so it says in 1 John 5 and 4, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, in that we are born of God. Our sins have been canceled. We have become justified, just as if we had never sinned. And we have become just what God wants us to be. And therefore, uh, we, are, we are a candidate for the greatest promise ever, ever made. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Isn't it tremendous? The greatest promise ever made, that we shall inherit all things because we are the born again people of God. Our next thought is the rewards of this greatest promise. Now, in, in, the, in the Revelation in chapter 2 and verse 7, it says, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And so one of the rewards of this greatest promise is that you will be eating of the tree of life. It's the tree that Adam and Eve missed. They missed it. Yeah, they missed it. When they sinned against God in the garden, they missed it. And we're going to come into it. And so what they lost, we will regain in Jesus' name. And it says, and it says to him that overcome, I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And so here is a tree in the midst of the paradise of God. If it's in the midst of the paradise of God, it will be there with such beauty and such, such loveliness, such architectural wonder. You won't get there by accident. You'll get there by going prescribed routes. Uh, it, it won't be easy to get there. Uh, even in the paradise of God, you'll move up to it, uh, pass an angel, moving up to it, pass another one, and, and you'll know you're entering into this glorious thing that's called, it's called the tree of life. And they that eat it live forever and forever. And so part of, the, uh, of this greatest promise that God ever made, that anyone could ever make, and only God could make it, is that you can eat of the tree of the life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And in eating of it, uh, you live forever. Then you can say the tree that was lost in the Garden of Eden is a tree that was gained back in the New Jerusalem, that it will be in the midst of the paradise of God. And he, he says to us in Revelation 2, 17, He that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone. This, this is part of this inheritance we're telling you about. And in the stone a new name. You will get a new name, neighbor. And no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Ah, God's going to give you a new name that won't be a common name like everybody else's name. is going to be a select name, and, and, and you will know it. And so you'll be eating of the hidden manna of God. God fed the children of Israel on, on manna for 40 years, and now he's got some hidden manna. <laughs> Isn't that great? Hidden manna, and he will, be, he will be giving you the hidden manna that you can live on in eternity. And he will be giving you what it says, a white stone. A white stone. Hey, it'll be prettier than any diamond ever found on the face of planet Earth. It'll be more gorgeous than any ruby that man has ever put his finger to. It'll be a beautiful white stone. And it will be placed in your own diadem. Uh, it, it will be yours. And then you will get this beautiful new name between you and the God that you will understand who it is. And also in that, sa that same uh, second chapter, of the book of Revelation, verse 26 says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give him power over all the nations. That, that's, that's rulership. You will personally have power over nations. I'm telling you, <laughs> I believe the promises of God, number one. I accept the promises of God and say, aren't they great? <laughs> aren't they terrific? To think that God is going to elevate us to such a royal position where the Bible says here that he will give us power. 
over nations. You say, will there be nations? Yes. Yes, there will be nations that will, that will bring the fruit of their increase up to the holy city constantly, the Bible says. And we don't know where the nations might be out over a thousand different planet Earths. Uh, we don't know uh, uh, how expansive it might be. It might be bigger than anything we have ever dreamed of. And it says that the overcomer, get that now, it's the overcomer. You're precious, you know. Hey, you're great. You better believe that. You know, if you can only get your reality of how, how great you are and how wonderful you are. And that God is going to give you power. God is going to give you power over nations because you're an overcomer. Isn't that sweet? Aren't you glad you're living for the Lord? Aren't you glad He's your heavenly Father? Aren't you glad you're following in the, in the footsteps of the Lord? And the rewards are beyond our imagination, and we say thank Him for it. Now, in that same book of Revelation, uh, it's a great book, you know, in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, And to him that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. It's part of that, that, that greatest promise in the Bible. And I will not blot his name out of the book of life, secure forever will not blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess him or his name before my Father and before his angels. And so part of that greatest promise is that you're clothed in white raiment before the throne of God. Your name will, cannot and will not ever be blotted out of the book of life and that you will confess, be confessed, that the Father will know you personally because the Lord Jesus shall come up before him and say, this is my friend, and will name you. And, and God the Father will look upon you and rejoice in, in that you are one of his and that you have been recommended through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. And then in that same chapter of chapter 3 and verse, and, and verse 21, you see, the Lord never gets through telling us just simply how, how great and how tremendous these, uh, this, this greatest promise is. And if I were to talk for years, rather than just for this show, if I were to talk for years, I would ever be able to tell you uh, the majesty of the greatest promise in the Bible when God says you will inherit. He didn't say he'd just give you all things. He didn't say that you would get them because you were holy or clean or pure. He says it's an inheritance that because you become sons of God and because you're born again and because you belong to him, because of that you inherit. Say inherit. Isn't that great? We inherit these things. They belong to us because of blood kin, because we are now the, the children of the Most High God and we inherit to them. We come into them. What a beautiful thing to come into. All that book of Revelation is great uh, for you to understand all the promises of God. And the promises of God are not always positive. The, 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 the promises of God have always already extended toward the wicked. That if he lives wickedly and sinfully, God has said, this is what will happen to you. That's a promise. It'll happen. It'll happen. Uh, when I was a little boy and I did what was wrong and my mother promised me a spanking or a whipping, uh, that promise came true. If she promised me ice cream, I'd get ice cream. But if she promised me a whipping, I also got that. Her promises were, were always faithful. Well, God's is too. To the ungodly, he promises them that they will have destruction if they don't serve him. He promises them they'll have sorrows if they don't serve him. And, and they get it, the fulfillment of the promises of God toward them. But unto us that loved him and gave ourselves unto him and that we become his children. The choice promises of the Bible are ours, all culminated in one majestic promise. One majestic promise. When in next to the last chapter of the whole Bible, he comes at us and says, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something good and something glorious. And, and that is, in Revelation 21 and 7, if you overcome, you will positively and definitely and assuredly inherit all things. And he says, at that point, I will be your God, and you shall be my son. So the inheritance is related to sonship. It is related to sonship, not, not cousinship. <laughs> not nephewship, but sonship. We are now the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we shall be like him when he appears in glory. And we must all know that. Also in, in, in the Revelation chapter 3 and verse 21, it says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Ooh. And that's part of that greatest promise. We, you, 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 you will uh, sit with me 
in my throne. I tell you, I feel sorry for people that don't want to live for God. I feel sorry people selling out to the devil for, for, for drugs. Isn't that something? For drugs. All they do is knock your head out to where you can't think. What's wrong with a man that knocked his head out? You know? It's like taking the steering wheel off of an automobile and, and saying, now automobile, take me to town. It can't take you to town if you don't have a steering wheel. And your body can't go anywhere without a brain. They'll put you in an institution and, and, and lock the doors and, and, and you're there till you die. Uh, protect your brain. I, I overly protect my brain. I don't permit my brain to think on bad things. I won't permit it. I say, stop it. I, I, I won't permit my brain to see things that are wrong. I don't want to see uh, pornographic things. I don't want to see them. I won't permit my brain to communicate with them by looking upon them or anything. I want my, my mind to be clean and pure before God and for it to be accepted of the Lord. That he will say, I accept it of you in, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. To him that overcometh, I grant to sit with me in my throne. Hey, that's, that's quite an honor. You better believe it. Even as I also over, overcame. Now, now, there's where we could park for a good half hour, you know. What's Jesus expecting you to do? What he did. He overcome the, the scoffers, the mockers, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the liars, uh, even the betrayers, uh, like Judas. He didn't just say, oh, my God, I'm finished. Uh, Judah betrayed me. No. No, he didn't go down under betrayal. What's sending you down? Hard times or looking toward hard times? And No, 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 no. We don't go down that easy. We, we don't go down that easy. And God doesn't let us go down at all. He is a mighty God. He is a glorious God. He is a sustaining God. And the promises are just as real as a check in your hand that's already signed. You go to the bank and get out, get out the goodies. That's exactly what you do. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame, Jesus says. How, how do I get here? By overcoming. You're not going to get there any other way. You're not going to get there because you belong to some church denomination. You're not going to get that way because you've done certain things in the flesh. You were nice to this fellow. You paid your debts over there and so forth. You're not going to get there. You're going to get there because you overcame like Jesus overcame. He was never a quitter. He stayed right in there. He knew his day. He understood his hour, and he lived the right way, and he was an overcomer. And I am set down with my Father in his throne. He said, now you can do with me what I do with the Father in, in, in Jesus' name. And he offered that. He offers it to you, and he offers it to me. And he says, come on and get it now. Uh, when a, such a tremendous thing is offered, it seems to me that we wouldn't permit any Thing on the face of this earth to deter us from moving towards such an inheritance to where God would have to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Isn't that something? You're not a son. No, I never knew you. Neighbor friend, I want you right now, uh, student, I want you right now to know how great the promises are, how strong they are, how fulfilling they are, and by the way, how stringent they are. God's not playing church. And God's not looking over things. If you expect God to look over you like you're a little baby, oh, you fell down. Oh, you did. No, 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 no. God's expecting you to be a man. God's expecting you to be a woman. And he's expecting you to live right. And the greatest promise in the Bible is made to the overcomer. <laughs> I'm one of them. How about you? I am determined. How about you? I want you to be in, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. In the Revelation chapter 3 and verse 12, it says, To him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Hey, that's strength, isn't it? In the temple of the Most High, you're one of the pillars there that holds up all things. And he shall go no more out. How you like that? You're there forever. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from God, and I will write upon him my new name. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And you, in that same book of Revelation, in chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, And he that hath an ear, let him hear. And that's what I'm saying to you. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. Well, overcomers, how you like that? <laughs> how you like that? Hey, you agree that's the greatest, the greatest promise in the Bible? Can you see that there's none any greater? It don't matter if you offered you a ton of diamonds and four tons of emeralds 
and 40 tons of gold. This is all things. The streets up there are paved with gold. You see, there's no problem there. The gates are made up of one, of one pearl. And, and so uh, you can't find anything grander and greater. And, and he says you inherit the whole thing by becoming an heir, by becoming a son of God or a daughter of God. I want to urge you to be sure that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, to be sure that you're not going through a, a, a religious service or, or a religious program and, and holding on to religiosity as a way of life, but that you have the Lord Jesus Christ inside of you, His love, His peace, His joy, His long-suffering inside of you. And then you can be sure of this. The greatest promise in the Bible is yours. Isn't that great? He that overcometh shall inherit all things. All is all, and we got it all. May I bless you. We thank you, Father, for these that have heard. And we pray that many others will hear. And you will stir up our pure minds, and they'll never be the same again. And we thank you for these tremendous promises of God that we can pray over, that we can bring to fulfillment in our own lives. We ask you to anoint us to understand our inheritance through the promises of God.